Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna walk you through how I rebuild my dampers for your uh, somatic scars. So let's get started. First, you wanna open up the damper. Grab some paper tissue and lay down all the parts. I like to save uh, a maximum of oil because this oil as you can see is still clear. So it's okay to reuse it. Remove the piston. Earring, O-ring and shim. Have some brake cleaner, put everything in. Give it a good stir. For the O-ring and the um, piston, give it a good rub on the, on the tissue. Good enough. So now you want to make sure everything is clean with no oil residue, especially the cavity inside the vein. Make sure it's also fully dry with no residue of brake cleaner. You want to thoroughly check the bearing, especially the rear dampers. Um, some dust can get inside, so sometimes you have to clean it a little bit more carefully. But this one is perfectly fine. For shock oil, lately I've been using 650 with the ADC caps. Uh, I haven't had uh, good success with 650. The, the team has been using also Axon oil. Uh, 50 is a good starting point. Uh, same with associated damper oil. So now you want to refill the damper about four millimeters from the top of the thread. Reinsert the piston inside the vein. That you want to be kind of flush with the little uh, cutout. A little bit more than that. Perfect. And you want to add a drop of oil behind the piston to make sure you don't drop any oil inside the damper. Make sure you don't uh, add any bubbles. Perfect. Drop it in. It drops right in. Very satisfying. Now I want to check the amount of oil that I put inside the damper. Because uh, too much gonna go uh, some overflow. With that I just did wrench and remove the excess right now. And I want to stop when the oil barely fills the cavity back when I remove the branch. Tiny bit more. See, it takes a bit of time. That's perfect, what you want. Give it a bit of a wiggle to remove any air that would have been trapped. And now you have two options. Either you let it sit for about an hour or if you have a pump, give it a go in the pump twice or maybe three times. And in about 15 minutes, you're ready to proceed. So, I've come prepared. I have a damper already ready to uh, assemble. Here it is. So, proceed with the cap. To make sure I don't cross thread the, uh, the cap, I first go a little bit backwards. I feel some kind of a click. There it is. And you can go fully tight. Now you can see some oil is overflowing and filling the orange cavity. You want to clean that excess. Right. 
Now, since you install, in install the cap, the pressure inside the damper increase, so the piston moves up. And now we want to check the depth of the piston. You can use this uh, MR33 tool with the little probe set at exactly 13.5 millimeters or any kind of uh, probe like a toothpick with a mark on it will do a perfectly fine job. And now we're going to push the piston back inside as you can see. Perfect. Now since the piston has been pushed down oil is again gonna escape I want to clean the orange cavity again and move on install the o-ring and the bearing so that you can press it into place with a 5.5 nut wrench and a machine In the excess of oil. Here you can even use brake cleaner, it's safe to use because the o-ring is protected by the bearing and some, uh, some oil, so no risk at all. And now you want to double check the height of the piston, this time again with the probe, you want to have a bit of a gap from the top of the vein. I'm going to show you how you see, it stops at about one mil from the top, meaning the piston moved up again because of the extra pressure of the o-ring. I can actually show you on a damper cutaway. That's roughly what you want to have in the end. Uh, the piston has some space below and above, so it can account for any uh, variation in temperature or pressure inside the damper. So now you can reinstall the damper on your shock holder. And for that screw, I like to use a tiny amount of thread lock. But this screw can either get loose, losing some drama, or if you over tighten it, you might damage the thread. So better use some uh, thread locks just to make sure. Back in place, secure it, not too tight. Check for free movement, no bubbles, no nothing. And now I like to check it against a, a pre-built damper and check if they are absolutely equal. And now you can see the movement is exactly the same, which means I've done a pretty good job. That's it for now. We have a Discord server now online. I dropped the link in the description. Feel free to pay us a visit for more tips and tricks and, and news. Thanks for watching and see you guys at the track.